Taking ball one, a little looping fly ball, left center field. It's going to drop for hit number 2,000 in Chipper Jones' career. And there is the professor, Pete Van Weeren, shaking the hand of Chipper Jones on his induction day into the Braves Hall of Fame. You heard his call of Chipper's 2,000th hit. And Chipper's on the phone with us. Where are you, my friend? I am in Des Moines, Iowa, guys. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> Well, before we ask you what you're doing in Des Moines, first, thanks for joining us. This is uh, a, t a tough day. I mean, there's no way to put it. We we lost our, our friend and the last of the big three in the broadcast booth today. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really tough day for, for Braves country. I was uh, sitting up here. I got up this morning. Usually every morning I wake up and I get on my phone to catch all the previous days and nights news. And when that came across my my timeline on Twitter, it was, uh, I think my heart dropped a good three or four inches. It was just one of those jaw-dropping moments in my in my life where I just had to sit there for five minutes, you know, in, in shock that, that he, was, he was gone. I mean, you played your whole career as a Brave. Pete Van Weeren covered your entire career as a player. I mean, that, that's just, that doesn't happen in today's game anymore. No, and and he really did such an eloquent job, you know, at, at at covering everything. And there's no there's no wonder why every time we had a special occasion at the ballpark, whether it was you know a number retirement or or you know whatever it may be, that that Pete Van Weeren was the master of ceremonies. He was he just it, it flowed out of his mouth a little better than everybody else and. I don't think there's one single Pete Van Weer moment that uh, that I have where it doesn't bring a smile to my face. And, and, and you guys know, I mean, when we get on the planes and whatnot, every once in a while I kind of sneak up there and, and talk to you guys and, and just kind of soak everything in. But it was different when Pete got involved in that in that conversation because he just had these stories that were just captivating and whenever he got into story mode he made sure to listen yeah everybody got up on the edge of their seat and got close yeah and when you were first breaking in chipper and got to know the broadcast crew i, I always wonder what a young player thought of pete because he was definitely the more reserved of the of the guys well i Pete made it very easy on everybody, whether you were a 10 or 15 year veteran, whether you were, you were a rookie, he talked to you like you were part of the family. There was no, um, you know, it wasn't like uh, you were all that intimidated per se. It was just, hey, this is Pete Van Weir and he's easy to talk to. He's a great guy and, and I soaked up every opportunity I got to talk to him. You have a great sense of humor, very dry wit. Self-deprecating wit, if you will. Pete wasn't that way, but he was a funny, funny guy. Once he let you into the circle, is that a fair way of putting it? Was that the way you interacted with Pete on a humorous level? Oh, uh, there's, there's no doubt. Uh, you know, like I said, it, every opportunity that you got to hang with Pete, you, you took that opportunity. He was very, you know, kind of a dry sense of humor himself, and. And you really had to get to know him to kind of get to know that wit and get used to it. But I just, you know what, whether you call him the professor, whether you call him Mr. Smithers, whether you call him <laughs> just plain old Pete, uh, we all had nicknames for him. He soaked it up. He loved it. And like I said, even even today, so many of the memories that I have of Pete Van Weeren have brought a, brought a smile to my face. Yeah, we're showing a picture of Pete on the television, Chipper. I don't think you can see it where you are, but over Pete Van Weeren's career as a Braves broadcaster from 1976 to 2008, he broadcast 15 division winners, 128 playoff games. He saw four MVPs play, six Cy Young Award winners, three Rookies of the Year. There should have been a fourth, and <laughs> and six and six Hall of Famers over a 33-year career, and soon to be more Hall of Famers yeah. on that list too. Well, he's uh, he, he, we we had a good run here in Atlanta, and I can't think of a better guy to, to sit up in the box and and kind of neutrally 
recall every single inning. You know, I didn't get a chance to watch much of it. I did a little before I got to the big leagues, but Pete was, oh man, he was just so eloquent. You just, you just really kind of got wrapped up in the game whenever he was talking the game. And and if you got a chance to, to to get a story out of him or get some stats out of him or some little nugget or tidbit that you didn't have a snowball chance in hell of knowing. He knew it, you know, and, and uh, like I said, just being able to soak up everything you could from him. It was it, it was a pleasure for me to sit in his presence, you know, as much as I could. The only really chance I got to do that was on the plane rides, and, man, we had some great plane rides through the years. And it's interesting how the game has changed from a broadcasting perspective, and I'd love to get your thoughts on this from a modern player's perspective. One thing about Pete was he gave it to you straight. I mean, he, he we have a clip, and maybe we've already played it. He never broadcast a game to please a player, a general manager, a team president, or a broadcast executive. He broadcast the game for the fans, and if he saw a player not playing well, he said so. As a player who – today's player, I think in many ways, they, they – Want to be skin. want to be loved on. Yeah. Um, Pete didn't. Really, yeah, they have to have their ego massage. Yeah, and bit. that yeah. that wasn't that wasn't Pete's way of doing it, and he was able to uh, broadcast for so long with complete direct honesty, and he always had the truth on his side. As a player, you had to respect that, didn't you? You really did, and as Tommy said a little bit ago, you know he could he could criticize you in the most eloquent eloquent way. You know, I mean, you could go over twenty five and. And uh, Pete would find some kind of way to make an 0 for 25 sound uh, okay. You know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he just he had that way about him, and and I think you know uh, he could get his point across without hurting anybody's feelings. Uh, I think anybody who knew Pete knew that he didn't mean anything personal personally by it, but he just he just had that way and that air about him where you know. It didn't matter if he was, you know, somewhat cursing you out. You, you couldn't get mad at him. He just had that eloquent way of, of putting things. Love listening to him. Love working with him. Learned something almost every time I worked with him. You know, and I'm, I'm not talking about broadcasting. I learned something about that every time. But I'm talking about baseball-wise. You know, just when you think you've got a pretty good... Uh, grip on things he breaks out something else on you that takes you by surprise yeah there's you know there there's only a a handful of people that that, that god bestows in your in your life that, that is able to endow you know knowledge on you pretty much every time you you know you get to talk to them and uh that's why i said coming up and and uh Coming up to the front of the plane and talking with you guys and getting Pete involved in those, I can't tell you how many little nuggets of information, whether it was a trivia question or, or you know, something else, you know, that had to do with the game of baseball. I always walked back to the back of the plane saying, golly, I didn't know that, you know, and, <laughs> and you know, Pete was the orchestrator of all that. Yeah, he was a fan. He, 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 how do I, he respected the game. And I think that's what fans felt about you and your career. You respected the game. So from an outsider's perspective, Chipper, I thought you two in that way were kindred spirits. Well, Pete is, uh, Pete is, yeah, I just, I can't help but, but think of the uh, drinking session that's going on up there. Tonight. It's a beauty. So it's a <laughs> it, it, It's got to be, I'll bet uh, Ernie Sr. And, and Chip, your dad, Skip, are, are just, tipping a few back back there just kind of sitting back in their lounge chairs and just reminiscing over so many years of great baseball so many years of great calls I just uh, I almost wish I, I was a, a fly on the wall to be able to listen to some of the stories that they're going to tell today. There's a Manhattan there's a, <laughs> there's a double beef feeders and there's about six Heinekens <laughs> On the well, table. I don't know. I don't, I don't know who drinks what, but <laughs> I can assure you that they're going to uh, probably fall asleep in those lounge chairs tonight. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> and the best news of all, Chipper, un unlike lefty old duels, they're not going to run out of anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, they ahead. they certainly deserve it, and I'm uh, you know today is a, a sad day, but uh, you know because 
Pete, Pete is gone, and and all those all those guys are up there looking down on us, uh, having a smile. But like I said, I just I, I can't think of. I always called him Mr. Smithers when he walked up to my locker, and I can't I can't uh, not think of Mr. Smithers and, and and not crack a little bit of a smile. Well, Chipper, I know he appreciates that. I'm sure Elaine and the family appreciates that. We appreciate you taking time to join us tonight. Thanks. My pleasure, guys. Thanks, Chipper. All right, Braves Hall of Famer Chipper Jones somewhere in the cornfields of Iowa.